Hey, it's your boy Local FC, and we are here with the Western Sydney Wanderers, and we are talking pre-season vibes, we are talking culture, we are talking heritage, and we are talking everything about this big club. We're talking to the players, the coaching staff, and we're getting down to the DNA of what makes this club so special. Um, first up, we've got my boy, my broski, BI, aka the big ticket. How are you, my guy? Very good, very good. How are you? Good, man. Good. First things first, big question. Jordan 4s or Jordan 1s? I'm going Jordan 1s. Jordan 1s? Jordan 1s, yeah, definitely. I didn't really wear them too much when I was younger, but as of recent times, putting on a pair, they're pretty, they're pretty comfortable, actually. They're more comfortable than I would have thought, so I'm definitely going Jordan 1s. Cool, cool, cool. And, you know, JD hooked you up. They hooked me up with a pair of dunks, and you got your Jordans on there. How are you feeling about those? Yeah, appreciate that, JD. Thank you very much. And, yeah, um, Obviously, Jordan's always nice to wear, so nice and comfortable and um, very stylish as well. Cool, cool. Um, let's get down to the serious business. We're talking about practice. <laughs> yes, we're going to be talking about practice a little bit here. So, um, yeah, looking forward to it and always good to chat to you. Always, my guy. Um, so, what I wanted to do here, I'm... We speak once to twice daily, um, and I know you as a footballer, but most importantly, I know you as a person, and, and I think you're a pretty amazing human being, um, uncle to my little man. Um, but I want the people to actually get to know who you are as a person off the pitch, but also how serious you are about your craft. Um, we'll go first off about the locks. We'll start off with those. <laughs> Obviously COVID, but is it staying for this season, the new look? Well, currently I don't have a min, but... Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll tinker with it a little bit. They'll be here and there. Um, yeah, I'll, I don't think I'll want them to be like permanent, so I'll be washing them out and stuff like that. But I'll definitely be rocking them throughout some games, that's for sure. And has the do-rag come out to training yet, have you? No, the do-rag, the do-rag <laughs> stays at home. It stays at home. I only wear it when I need to go to bed. So the do-rag's been staying at home at the moment. Um, obviously, you know, coming to the Wanderers, you know about the club and its rich history in, um, in such a short space of time and what they've created. We're going to go to, you know, my favourite time of football season is the start of the season. It's not because pre-season's ending, because I know how you feel, I know that. But for me, I love the start of a season and I love jerseys, I love jersey culture. Um, can you run us through the new home and away kits? I think they're, they're on point, there's so much heritage to them, but can you run me through your for first thoughts and what you told me when you saw them? Uh, well, obviously, I, I remembered when I played against Wanderers in the first season you, they were here. Who did you play for? Central Coast. <laughs> yeah, yeah <but> we're talking <laughs> about that. But yeah, I played for Central Coast. Then the first season the Wanderers came in, I remember the jerseys looked very similar to this. So obviously, being year 10 for the Wanderers, it was um, a nice little touch. And obviously, I, I'd like both of the jerseys. And... I like the gold detail, especially on the home kit. So um, I'm looking forward to, to wearing that jersey and seeing all the fans in the jerseys as well, to be honest. And then I think there's the X, the 10 on the back as well, if you flip that. Around. Yeah, the little, the little detail. Details. Yeah, I think the real, like, the ode to the past and moving into it like a modern era with yourself is really, really special. And um, how important is it to have that heritage, not only in the club, but in the jersey itself as well? Um, I think it's very important. Obviously, the fans... I think jerseys are very much for the fans as well and they need to feel connected and have that sort of love for the jersey and so that sort of passion and know that I think they're kind of being listened to. So um, obviously from all the feedback, I think everyone loves the jerseys so far and um, hopefully we can have a su successful season in them as well. Um, Pre-season vibes, you are looking fit, strong. Um, how's it been? This is your first full pre-season in a while. How's it, how's it come across? Um, yeah, it's been, it's been very good, um, putting in a lot of hard work and like you said, this is my first full pre-season in a while, with no, I've actually been able to have a break as well, so I've enjoyed it, um, you don't realise how important pre-season is until you have to try and catch up and make up for the lost time and it's, you think it's easier but then once you're actually in it and you're like, damn, I, it would have been nice to have one. Um, so it's always, it's always good and obviously it's been hard work, but um, that's necessary and, and it's been enjoyable. 
Um, obviously, we'll just touch on last year. Your preseason, you know, was interrupted for, for other reasons, which we'll park the bus on that. But, um, you know, first season, it's always kind of, I look at it for a player, it's getting your feet wet, getting used to surroundings and, and coming into the second season. How hard was that for you last year to deal with what you had to deal with, but then, like, not have that preseason base, which you're getting now? How are you feeling physically and mentally? Um, yeah, obviously, like you said, last season was always a bit of a hard transition, but... Also, it was, like you said, it was good to, to get used to the surroundings, find your feet and all that sort of stuff. So coming in this season and having a pre-season for me has been, been crucial and very important. And knock on wood, I've, I've not had like any injuries or any niggles. So I've participated throughout the whole of pre-season, which I've enjoyed very much. So like I said, just putting in the groundwork, putting in the hard work and um, come season, hopefully that all, all comes together. Um, I know how um, true you are to your craft and how seriously you take your profession. Um, how, is that in, how is that part of your process in pre-season, making sure you're not only doing all the teamwork, but you're making sure you're doing things to make yourself a better version than you were last year and the year before? Well, yeah, for me, I've always considered myself to be like super professional and make sure that I do everything in my power to to be able to perform at my best and make sure that when I do do like come off a game or come out of a training session that I have no regrets and I know, okay, say results might not go your way or things might not happen for you, but I know I can walk off and say to myself that I, I gave everything I could and I tried every everything possible. So um, yeah, in terms of like being in the gym, I'm always in the gym to make sure like that I am keeping fit and not getting injured and Obviously, last season for myself, it was good that I was able to be, be available for selection for every game. So, um, since I had like my major surgery a few years ago, I, I didn't think that that had happened. So, that was for me a little, little milestone and I was very proud of that. So, just making sure I have my routine and I keep to it and um, try and build on it and always try to be bigger, stronger, faster, whatever it may be. And then on the pitch as well, just... In terms of yeah, in terms of your positional play, your your finishing, all those sort of things, all all stuff I try to work on, and then also just in terms of like tactically, what you can learn, what you can watch as well, whether it's watching your stuff or watching people at the highest level, um, and seeing what they do and trying to apply it to your game. Yeah, we, um, that was one of the other questions. You're you're a student of the game. We we constantly have our WhatsApps and our calls and it's a daily. Um, you know, it's like looking at other players. Who are some of the players that you look overseas at? You know, we're constantly messaging, guys, mess, messaging each other like, oh, did you see what Lukaku did today? Did you see how he's doing that role? But who are the players that you're looking at and what are you trying to take from their games to add it into yours? Um, yeah, I'll definitely say someone like Lukaku at the moment. Um, the way his movement and stuff like that. And then, uh, you know me, but someone I always will always look at is Thierry Henry. Yeah, yeah so... Um, just the way he moved and what he did was uh, was special. So he's obviously someone you try and emulate. Obviously, these players at the highest level. So um, yeah, it's hard to replicate that, and yeah. th- there's a reason they're there. But if you can take a little bit from that and try and adapt it to your game, um, and if it can help you, then that's always it's always nice. And um, just to go back to the jerseys quickly, two two questions. Obviously, with jerseys, they're starting to become more important off the pitch than they are on for the way they look. You know that as well as anyone. Um, so how do you think that the fans and the crowd will look wearing that off pitch? And secondly, when you look at the jersey, as we said, it's, it's the his- history. It goes back to the, the OG jerseys. Like, who are some of the players that come to mind first for you? Like, for me, it's like Shinji just comes to mind when I think of Wanderers and, and Tarek Elric. Like, I just think of these guys. Who do you think of and what are your thoughts on that? how that will be in the terraces for the fans? Oh, I think... I think they'll look like, like I said, it would be nice to see all the fans wearing the jerseys, especially these new ones um, at home games and away games as well. And I think, yeah, off the pitch, like you said, jerseys are very important these days. So I think they'll, they'll ma- match well with whatever our fans wear. And then, yeah, for, for, for the jerseys, I think obviously, like you said, Shinji Ono, um, even Topol Stanley, I think of the names that come for me because obviously I played against them as well and Shinji yeah, was, a, was a great player in the league and I actually enjoyed watching him and playing against him as well. So, um, yeah, I think 
definitely Shinji Ono for me. And what's it like, you know, you came to Wanderers and, and you understand how big a club it is and you saw that, you know, last year being here, but what's it like putting the jersey on? Like, is there something special, like you grew up in the inner west? Um, is there something special, like you know that you're representing the people around here as well? Yeah, it's definitely special. Um, obviously, it's a hard working area and um, you can tell by the fans how passionate they are and it really means a lot and putting on the jersey is definitely a privilege and um, obviously you always try to you always try your best and try your hardest to make sure that you're putting in performances and trying to get results that that will make the the fans happy and make this club successful again. Cool. Um, obviously we do a pre-pre-season to, to keep you in check and keep you fit um, with Senior, my brother. Um, you're always in charge of the beats. Um, so what, what is on your playlist at the moment? Afro beats, hip hop, what are we talking? Yeah, well, I'm always a mixture of Afro beats, hip hop and R&B, but as of late, I've been listening to Meek Mill's new one. Yeah. Uh, been listening to a bit of Kanye West and Chris Brown as well. And then, um, yeah, I've always got like Wizkid, Davido, as well in, the, in that mix. Cool, cool. Um, that leads me on to my next um, question. Um, you consider yourself a leader when it comes, comes to African-Australian footballers. You're kind of the one that's broken the door down and you've been in the league a long time. And that's something that I know speaking to you so much that means a lot to you and something that you really want to take charge of moving forward. How much does that mean to you? And, and also the other thing that we've spoken about is the narrative around African Australian footballers, it seems to be that it's just one story that comes out that they came from a certain area. That, um, how much do you want to be part of that and how much do you want to change that, that narrative or be part of that narrative? Well, yeah, for me, it's obviously a big, yeah, it's a big thing. I'm very proud of my heritage. I, um, I grew up in a Nigerian home and, yeah, I've been privileged enough to, to live in Australia as well, but I've definitely not lo lost my heritage and I'm super proud of that as well. So, to be a part of that and be, to be, I, I would say, yeah, African-Australian is, um, is something nice. And I think I probably was one of the first that kind of played in the A-League, I would say, that grew up here as well. So um, it's always nice to see like other African-Australian young players coming through now and enjoying themselves and expressing themselves. I love all the dances they're, they're doing and stuff like that. So it's obviously a huge huge thing to me and I'm, I'm very, very, I would say, how would I say it? I would love to, to make sure that I am involved in that sort of stuff and moving forward that I can have a bit more of an imprint. And how do we have the next Bernie Abinis coming through? Are we doing enough? Like I know they have the African nations at the club here, but is football in Australia, do, we talk about being diverse and multicultural, are we doing enough in the communities to bring players through? Um, I would say we can do more. I think in I think in every sort of like culture we can we could we could see more players from different origins and backgrounds playing in the professional league. I'd love to think that that's possible. So I would say we can do more. Um, in terms of how, that's where it becomes difficult, and I'm not going to say I know, but I would love to say that we should be able to see more diversity and see more see more players of different uh, races playing in the league. Um, and something that we'll touch upon, because I think we need to touch upon it, it's really important, is something that you had to deal with and, and we dealt with it with you, was the racism that you received last year and that was in the league. How did you, and for me, I thought the greatest thing was the way you carried yourself. I don't think I've found anyone that is so chilled but just so strong, but your key thing was education. You didn't want any any ramifications you just want education and things to get better how did you feel with that and then also the league not, how did you feel that it was kind of just brushed to the side like how did that make you feel personally oh personally obviously it's it's not a nice feeling because it's something that i had to go through and there's obviously younger players as well that had to go through it but in terms of from like the club yourself and like the pfa i was I was happy with their response though and the way they helped, but in terms of a wider thing, yeah, obviously it wasn't, it wasn't nice because you see other younger players, obviously I dealt with it the way I did it's, and everyone's different. But and so was that part of the process as well, you stand out because there was younger guys that don't have a voice? 
Yeah, I would say for sure, because obviously they might not know how to deal with it or what avenue to go through. So I felt that um, I needed to needed to say something about it and address it, and hopefully that created the topic and it can be addressed in a more suitable manner and a faster manner when it when it arises next time. Um, we'll touch on last season for you. Um, Fourteen starts, seven assists, four goals. Um, how, what, when you look back, and as I said, you're a student of the game, when you look back at what you produced in the time that you played, and as you said, you were available for every minute, how do you feel about you know, your season last year? Oh, obviously, like we, we touched on earlier, to start with, like pre-season, obviously wasn't, wasn't, a, wasn't great. Not we did, I think, at Cook Park, though. Yeah, <laughs> but in terms of a collective with the team, not being here, uh, I think I came in maybe two weeks before the season started. So I don't think people realise how tough that is. Obviously, you don't want to use that as an excuse, but it would have been nice to start with the team from the beginning of pre-season and start to gel and create relationships with all the players from then. But yeah, when it comes down to it, first season, I, I would say I'm happy. But obviously, I want to do more and I want to be better and I know I can be better. So I know with this preseason and everything like that, that I've been making sure I put in the work to, to be better than, that, than last season. Um, when we talk about Western Sydney Wanderers, we talk about it as being a big club. That's something we always chat about. But growing up, as I said, we've both grown up in the inner West, played a lot of our football in Western Sydney. Um, there's a special DNA that if you come from, if, you play, if you've grown up playing football in the West, for me personally, it's that you, you have a chip on your shoulder. No one can mess with you. But if you can play in these parts out here, you can play. You can hang with anyone in the country. How do you feel about that? And how important is that to having your DNA and also about having a chip on your shoulder as well? Um, yeah, it's super important. Obviously, I grew up playing at Marconi and Blacktown when I was a junior. So, I, yeah, like you said, I know these parts very well. And um, those teams, normally the teams from these areas were always the best. Like you wanted to play at Marconi, you wanted to play at Blacktown. And... You, those were the big clubs so obviously it was it was always enjoyable and I think it did give you like a bit of that edge and street smart as well just because it wasn't always fancy or it wasn't always nice but you definitely enjoyed yourself so um, it's always it's always very important to to remember that and then on terms of the chip of the shoulder yeah I think obviously when you're out from out west you're like hard working you're so everything is a bit tougher for you. So, yeah, having that chip on your shoulder, I think it only motivates you. It only, it only makes you want to be better and make sure you prove people wrong. And there's also, I think, a very high football IQ out, out here. You've got to be able to play, but you've got to be able to look after yourself as well. Um, last year, obviously, missed out on the finals, which was disappointing. Um, very, very close. I felt if you guys got in there, you actually would have done some damage, I mean, you know, most goals in club history, which I don't think too many people know about, second most goals in the league. Where, where, did, where did that missing step go? It wasn't just one game, but I, I felt, you know, watching every game last year, you were in every game. Where, was, where did it kind of not happen, and how do you rectify that this year? <laughs> that's, a, that's a tough question. <laughs> do, I, do, I ask, do I wait for Robbo for that one? Yeah, you've got to ask the guy for that one. That's, that's his job, isn't it? But yeah, that's definitely a tough question. I don't know if you can pinpoint one thing. Um, yeah, just maybe just as a collective, we, like you said, we're always in it, but just couldn't get over that final hurdle. Maybe in, in like every little game, that's, that was like a tipping point and we just didn't, didn't manage to get over that. But um, yeah, in terms of rectifying that, obviously we've brought in some new faces and um, a lot more people again that have been successful in the league so I think with the new additions hopefully and the players that have stayed and the young boys that have come through that we have the right mixture and that we do start from the beginning in terms of like how we train and everything like that to build that sort of mentality and that sort of culture that we, we can make that next step because like you said I think last season we were always there thereabouts but it's about making that next step and really being do you want to be the best and do you want to win like in in the end that's what we're here to do and that's what we're paid to do and um that's got to be your mindset that 
if you can be the best you can be individually, collectively, and uh, obviously if you set your, your standards high and then if you fall short, you fall short, but if you don't set your standards high from the beginning, then what are, you, what are, you, what are we here for? Like, we're here to end up winning, so that's how I see it. A few more. We, we talk about the DNA of the club and the culture. There were moments last year where incidents happened on the pitch and, and you, made your, you made yourself present. You were backing up, like, these are my guys, you don't, you don't fuck with us. Like, how important is that to, as a team, as a collective, to be doing things like that on the pitch? It's about the football and it's about winning, but it's like, hey... Like, you mess with one of us, you mess with all of us. Yeah, definitely. I think you've always got to have each other's back. And um, you could see, especially like I would remember, like the derbies always bring that out in you because it's just how big the game is. But you've always got to try and replicate that in a game that I guess you're not going to have as big a crowd where it's not as intense. So that's about replicating it in those games as well. So... Obviously, the derby just brings that out of you because obviously... Who's, who's derby? <laughs> so that obviously does, that brings it out of you, but it's about when there's not as big a crowd, where it's not as an intense game, where the cameras are there and stuff like that. Being able to do it then as well, I think, is, is just as important. So again, like I said, it comes down to what do we actually want to achieve individually, collectively, and you've got to strive to be the best. Otherwise... Yeah, what are, again, like I said, what are we really doing? Three more. Do you feel, I know you as a person and as a footballer, do you feel misunderstood? Um, yeah, I would say so. I think people don't really... Because you, do, you don't really do meet, like, you don't do this. Yeah. You keep to yourself, you, you don't play the game, yeah. you just be. But do you feel like at times misunderstood and that just goes, okay, I'm just going to do my football thing and judge me on that? Yeah, I think so. I think, yeah, maybe people, because I'm yeah, keep to myself or they don't really know me or they choose not to really know me or for whatever reason. Yeah, I think maybe you could say I'm a bit misunderstood, but um, yeah. Are you lazy? Definitely not lazy. <laughs> I'm, I, I know I'm one of the hardest workers, so I'm definitely not lazy, but yeah, I'd, I'd say yeah, I'm misunderstood for sure. Yeah, I think we, like watching the games last year, like it was like we spoke about it as well. Like if you don't do a 50 metre run with the ball, like you've had a bad day at the office. Like it's like, but that's not, normal like it's people just expect you to get the ball and go yeah <laughs> yeah I feel, I feel that sometimes yeah that yeah I, I can't really just work my way into the game or like they expect something special from me all the time but look I guess that sort of expectation is 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 there and I've just got to work with it and try and block it out and then make sure I deliver when I, when I have the opportunity and when I have the chance. Last two for me. Um, something we spoke about, I think, kind of halfway through last year, but definitely in the off-season, we've spoken about it a lot, is leadership. Um, your coach called for it last year. We see that in you. How are you trying to bring that out in not only pre-season? I think you showed it last year in spurts, but how are you trying to bring that out in pre-season and in, into the new season as well? I think, it, yeah, for me, it's just about, um, yeah, like kind of, like you said, you probably see it in spurts, but kind of like bringing that out every day. Um, and then also, I would say, like trying to help like the young boys and stuff like that. I've, I've enjoyed that. And I've always found like I would want to be, when I was young, I would want to be an older player that the young boys can talk to. And yeah, I'm going to be hard and stuff because I, I have high expectations and I want us to do well but they can talk to me and if they want to get advice or anything like that, I'm always there and that I want to try and actually be there to help them. And so that's how I, I remember like older boys that helped me, I would want it to be the same like that as well. Um, you have a winning mentality. Um, I know that um, you, you want to achieve greatness. You're in your prime now the, and you know that these are the years you need to make things happen. You know, you've won at the Mariners, you've won a championship at the other club and then you know <laughs> and, and you won in the k league like you're a winner like how important is that for you to do here and what are your that's your team goals and then what are your your personal goals do you want to be back in the national team is that something you see as like i want to win here with the wanderers and i want to be you know playing at the biggest level level yeah well yeah like you said i've i've won a few a few things so um you got, got the ring to show it. <laughs> yeah i've got a ring to show it as well so um yeah definitely i want to Ultimately, like I've said before, 
if we're here to play football, but ultimately your end goal has to be winning. Like, it has to be winning something. Otherwise, it's a, it's a waste of time. And to be honest, like, I don't see why we wouldn't have our standards set that high because that's what we're here to do. Like, do we, we want to be better collectively, individually? Yes, of course, but you want to win things. And obviously, like, last season when we would win a game at home or, like, when we won the derby, you have that high. But if you take it and you win, win a grand final, for example, the high you get on that is it's unexplainable. You, you can't even put it into... And you don't, you, don't get many, you don't get many chances of that. No, you don't. You don't. And I see it like this is a club that should be doing that. So, yeah, obviously you've got you to gotta do all the hard work and it's a, lot of a, it's, a lot, it's a lot of like a process to get there and you have to take a lot of small steps to get there. But if you can, you can try and implement that every day and um, hopefully have the right pieces and have a bit of luck along the way that you can do that. And personally, what are the, what are the goals? Personally... Oh yeah, well obviously if we're if we're to win things and be successful then personally that only puts me in a better position and yeah, I'd love to be back in the Socceroos like anyone else. So um if I'm to do well individually and as a group I only see that be only easier and that will kinda of take care of itself. Um on the mental side of the game, obviously it's been tough for everyone, not just footballers, the whole community. Yeah. Um one thing that you, you've touched base on that you've enjoyed that people probably don't realise before the last two years you were away for what five five years yeah four or five years yeah. like how important for your mental side was it just nice to be home again and have oh. like your mum at the game and, and your sisters like we sit there with your family like how important is that for you just to you were saying like just to catch up for a coffee with us or go for dinner like they're small things but how important was that for you mentally oh that was yeah it was massive obviously like you said i'd been away from home for for a long time so to come back and spend time with my family and my friends and then have my family in the stands and watching games was always, it's always nice. And it actually like reminded me of when I was a, a, a younger player and how nice it was to have them there. So it was, it was enjoyable. And um, yeah, I'm looking forward to having my family and friends at games and stuff. And yeah, like you said, going to dinner and all that sort of stuff. And yeah, it was, it was just, yeah, very nice to have that. That's it, my guy. Always a pleasure. Thank you very much. <laughs>